Hey y'all, I'm back. Welcome to another YouTube video for What Else Is Going On podcast, aka We Go Podcast. The audio version drops every Tuesday and Friday. You can find that wherever you listen to your podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, podcast, all that good stuff. I told y'all I would be back. Uh, so there's a couple things I want to talk to y'all about. And I was trying to decide if I was going to talk about certain things in the uh, Rolling Stone article with Diddy. I found an article um, by Vibe that the six things that stood out to them that I thought were pretty good. So I'm thinking I want to talk to y'all about those in this video too. I just didn't want to make it too, too long, but you know, we'll see. So let's get into the things. First of all, y'all, they out here saying that Michael Jackson was a womanizer, womanizer. Oh, yo, a womanizer. Oh, ooh, 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 ah. Uh. Y'all, that was my song by Britney Spears. Maybe if we both lived in a different world, mm, mm, mm. I would be all good and maybe I could be your girl, but I can't because we don't. When I first started jogging, that was on, I used to listen to that song over and over again, as Nene would say, on the iPod. Um, that was loaded up. I would listen to that. That would be like somewhere in the middle of, my jock that kind of gave me like a boost. I loved that song. <clears throat> but anyway, they out here saying Michael Jackson was a womanizer. So this is from the Jasmine brand. Um, Michael Jackson called womanizer by ex bodyguard claiming singers team went to great lengths to hide his girlfriends and wives from the public. How well do you know your favorite celebrity? During a recent podcast interview, Michael Jackson's ex bodyguard, Matt Fidus, F-I-D-D-E-S, shared his version of who the king of pop allegedly was behind closed doors, he claimed. Michael Jackson was a real womanizer, but he was suppressed from expressing or showing any kind of interest in women because of his music label. They believed it wasn't good for his career and would ultimately impact his female fans. We went to great lengths to hide his girlfriends and wives the, from the public. He was brainwashed by Motown to not be seen with a girl because if you sing with a girl, your fan base would be gone. This isn't the first time Matt fights, who has also claimed to be the biological father of Michael Jackson's now 22-year-old son, Blanket, has dished on his former boss. In 2021, he said the Billie Jean artist had a brief affair with Whitney Houston in 1991, which happens to be the same year her ex, Bobby Brown, proposed. Ciao. Um, he continued in the interview. Towards the end of his life, Michael started to get more open, which led to the fatal decision to work with Martin Bashir. They hoped it would help him, but it only highlighted his issues with women. In the Living with Michael Jackson documentary, Bashir promised him things that never happened, and the footage was manipulated to fit a negative narrative. Before he noted his belief that the allegations of child abuse Michael Jackson faced were possibly financially motivated. Matt Fide said, if you watch the documentary, there's a part where female fans ask Michael for a hug and he responds warmly saying, I'll give you more than a hug. However, Bashir's commentary overshadowed these moments to maintain the program's narrative. The guy was into women. If you're going to go after someone and bring them down, child molest, um, M-U-R-D-E-R, R-A-P-E, those are the things. And once you've accused, and once you've been accused of that, you're over, aren't you? Michael never recovered from that. <clears throat> During his life, Jackson married twice, once to Lisa Marie Presley in 1994 and again to Debbie Rowe in 1996. However, both relationships ultimately came to an end. What are your thoughts on this entire situation? I mean, that is interesting. I, you know, Whitney's not here to back up his claim. Michael's not here to speak on it. I wonder if there's anybody else that knew. I just wonder why he's speaking out now. Well, I guess the same reason. And I say, why is he speaking out? Because he's not a victim of none of the, and let me say that. Like, you know how Diddy's accusers are speaking out? They should be. Like, there's no time limit on that. Like, to me, you speak, something happened to you. You speak out. I don't care if it's 10 years later, you have the right to speak out, right? So that's not what I mean when I say, I wonder why he's speaking out now. He's not a victim, but just meaning he's just telling stories about 
Michael, I guess maybe that's how he got the interview. I don't know the backstory, but, and I'm not saying it in a bad way. Like, why is he speaking out now? I'm just wondering um, what was the motivation and if there's anybody else out there that can back up his claim because he said we went to great lengths basically to um, make sure that the world didn't see Michael's women. So who else was a part of that we, I wonder, that's all. Child Michael was out here uh, zipping it and zooming it, I guess, huh? All right, moving on. Let's talk about somebody who's not zipping and zooming right now, Mr. Lenny Kravitz. This is according to Us Weekly. Lenny Kravitz hasn't had a serious relationship for nine years, still committed to celibacy. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Lenny Kravitz is still waiting to meet the right woman. The rocker who turned 60 on Sunday, May 26th, opened up about his love life in an interview with The Guardian, published on Thursday, May 30th. Kravitz said he hasn't been in a serious relationship for nine years and is still committed to remaining celibate until he finds the right partner. Yes, it's a spiritual thing, Kravitz said of remaining celibate. The flyaway singer who was married to actress Lisa Bonet from 1987 to 1993 first spoke about abstaining from sex until marriage in 2008, saying he had not had sex in the previous three years. So he first spoke about abstinence in 2008, saying that basically from 2005 to 2008, he hadn't had sex. It's just a promise I made until I get married. Where I'm at in life, the women have got to come with something else, not just the body, but the mind and the spirit, Kravitz told Maxim in 2008. It usually trips them out, but that's the way it's going to be. I'm looking at the big picture. However, in 2011, Kravitz told Details Magazine his remarks got blown out of proportion. Kravitz also told The Guardian he'd like to be in a relationship again, but I have become very set in my ways in the way I live. Elsewhere in the interview, the rocker reflected on turning 60 and maintaining his good looks. To keep in shape, Kravitz, who shares daughter Zoe Kravitz, 35, with Bonet, stays away from junk food and is rigorous about hitting the gym. Take last night, he said. I worked all day, interviews, rehearsing into the night, got home at 11 p.m. I need to eat something. Now it's 1 a.m. I didn't get my workout, so I went to the gym and I did a 90-minute workout at 2 a.m. I don't want to be in the gym at 2 a.m., but I know that I must. Try, I need to get myself together because I skipped yesterday and the day before, child. Because it's part of my discipline, it's about body, mind, and spirit. I want all of these those three elements aligned. If my body's in shape and my spirit and mind are not, then it's just something nice to look at or to boast about. Who cares? For me, all of it has to be aligned and I have to do the work it takes to have all of those in alignment so my being can be at its maximum. Well, Gail shot her shot, right? So who knows? Maybe they can, maybe they can become spiritually aligned and then horizontally and then maybe vertically. Who knows? But um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I was like, okay, he seems to be really serious about it not just being sex. You know what I mean? So shout out to Lenny Kravitz for um honoring himself in that way, since that is what he is choosing to do. Next up, let's get into Charlemagne. I'm talking about Wendy Williams and Diddy. This is also from the Jasmine brand. Charlemagne recalls Diddy getting Wendy Williams fired from Hot 97 in 98 after suggestions about his sexuality. Charlemagne the God recently claimed that Diddy was responsible for Wendy Williams firing from Hot 97 in 1998 due to her suggestions about his sexuality. I remember all of this because right after that, I believe, is when she came to Philly. And I lived in Jersey, not far from Philly, and worked um, in a mall called Deptford Mall, which is basically right on your way in um, to Philly. So I remember she came to Power 99. The 45-year-old media personality appeared on comedian Andrew Schultz's flagrant podcast to discuss the history between media icon Wendy Williams and disgraced record executive Diddy, stating, Wendy's whole thing was Diddy was gay. That's why Wendy got fired from Hot 97. Wendy got fired from Hot 97 by Diddy because that's when Bad Boy was smoking hot. She got fired for putting that out there. Williams, Wendy Williams' firing from Hot 97 reportedly occurred after she not only suggested that the hip-hop mogul was homosexual, but allegedly had a photo of Diddy in an intimate situation with another man. I remember this, too. 
Um, so Jean Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, corroborated this story in a 2022 interview with The Art of Dialogue. He explained the power Diddy had with the radio stations in New York. Mother Effers didn't breathe hard if Diddy didn't want them to. Diddy got one of the hottest DJs off Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down. Jean Deal further elaborated that during a gathering in Cancun back in the 90s, Diddy and his friends engaged in playful antics, including pranks. At one point, a colleague pulled down Diddy's trunks from behind, prompting onlookers to capture the moment in photos and email them to Wendy Williams. In her 2004 book, The Wendy Williams Experience, Wendy Williams also shared her feelings about Diddy. She mentioned that the businessman had tried to ruin her career. Williams emphasized the challenges she faced because of him, stating, the hell he put me through, I will never forget, but I don't hate him. This all comes amid a wave of accusations and lawsuits alleging actual abuse and misconduct with some involving interactions with men. So his former bodyguard is basically saying they were playing around jokes, pulling pranks. Somebody pantsed him from behind. Somebody in front took a picture of it and sent it to Wendy as if, I guess, something more intimate was happening. Um, we know in February, producer Rodney Little Rod Jones filed a lawsuit in New York against Diddy. So, but I remember that I remember um, finding out the reason that Wendy was fired from Hot ninety seven was for Diddy um, because of Diddy, and like I said, um, she came to Philly. I thought she was also talking about Jay Z as well during that time. I'm pretty sure. I'm 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 almost positive um that was part of it also. Sorry y'all if y'all hear something. I hear a truck and I have my window closed. I was trying to see if that was safe light. Um I need my windshield fixed and they said between 12 and 5. So I'm just waiting for them to show up, but I don't think that was them. I don't think they show up in a big truck. But anyway, so we already knew that. Let's continue on talking about Diddy since we're here. So According to CNN.com exclusive, a federal grand jury may soon hear from Sean Diddy Combs accusers. Federal investigators are preparing to bring accusers of music mogul Sean Diddy Combs before a federal grand jury. Two sources familiar with the probe tell CNN signaling the U.S. Justice Department is moving toward potentially seeking an indictment of Combs. Possible witnesses have been notified by investigators that they could be brought in to testify in front of a federal grand jury in New York City, according to one source. Bringing individuals who have filed civil lawsuits against Combs before a grand jury would mark a significant escalation in the government's ongoing investigation involving the producer and Bad Boy Records founder. Combs has been named in eight civil lawsuits since November, seven directly accusing him of actual assault, one of the eight lawsuits filed by former girlfriend Cassie Ventura has been settled. Another lawsuit accused his son Christian Combs of actual assault. And Sean Combs is accused of aiding and abetting. I believe that was the story of the young woman. Um, he had rented a yacht and she was working um, on the yacht. A spokesperson for the Homeland Security Investigations Agency, HSI, declined to comment on the existence of a grand jury, but noted the investigation remains ongoing. These potential witnesses have not been prepped for testimony. Both sources told CNN, cautioning that HSI investigators are still in the process of gathering evidence and questioning potential sources of information in their federal probe into Combs. One source said investigators are being thorough and taking their time to ensure that an indictment, should there be one, is bulletproof. Grand juries comprised of ordinary citizens are critical tools, tools used by uh, prosecutors, providing both an investigative function and approving the subpoenaing of documents and witnesses and a vote on whether to criminally charge suspects. The use of a grand jury signals a particular case has moved beyond the preliminary stage where investigators generally assess whether possible violations of the law are believed to have been committed. Feds have interviewed multiple Combs accusers. Combs' home in Los Angeles and Miami were searched back in March. At the time, CNN reported that the rapper and entrepreneur was the target of a federal investigation carried out by a Department of Homeland Security team that handles human trafficking crimes and the ongoing investigation included a focus on 
ex trafficking, according to law enforcement sources. Now, additional sources told CNN that the majority of the plaintiffs who have filed civil suits against Combs have been interviewed by federal investigators. Combs has vehemently denied claims from many of the civil suits, but has not responded to all of the allegations. In December 2023, after four lawsuits had been filed against him, Combs posted a fierce denial on his social media, writing that sickening allegations had been made by accusers looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. CNN previously reported in March, per a law enforcement source, that the investigation stems from many of the sexual assault allegations put forth in several of the civil lawsuits against Combs. This is where I was like, mm. evidence includes video from Combs's residence. Federal agents are in possession of video taken inside of Combs' recently searched residences, a source said. It's unclear whether the video was seized during the raids or whether investigators obtain video from individuals they have been questioning. They are contacting people that they found on the tapes, a source told CNN. At least one male ex-worker who claims who claims he has been victimized by Combs, has been questioned during the investigation, one source said, adding that this individual was seen in footage that is in possession of the federal investigators. In some of the lawsuits against claims, accusers have alleged that they were informed after the fact that they were recorded having sex without giving their consent to be filmed. Combs has not responded to this specific accusation, but he dismissed all alleged wrongdoing and a blanket denial, again, that he posted December 2023. So they are interviewing people that they may have found in the footage. One gentleman that says he was a victim evidently has been questioned and was found in the footage. I hope he gets everything he deserves. I'm talking about Diddy, every single thing. Some of the things in that Rolling Stone article I'm, I'm going to mention in this next article that I read, y'all, from Vibe. And the way he just had, had a reign of terror is truly terrifying. Like, when you have this man, after he got all the millions of dollars, he started clearly before that. But then you add in the money and the fame and it's like he was unstoppable at that point and can do rain whatever hell he wanted down on people. But justice is hopefully coming, will continue to come, continue. And even if it, it doesn't erase what he did, but if the victims could get something, you know what I mean? Like, it's just disgusting. Like when you, I just, I just don't, don't understand the mind of a person like that to want to inflict the mental and physical torture is what it is. It's just sick. Now we're going to get into, oh, child, my alarm for my laundry. Y'all, speaking of laundry, real quick. So I was like, I'm get, I'm being productive today. I'm doing my videos. I'm going to reach out to folks to come on the podcast. I'm going to do wash my laundry because I can get it all done in a day. Then I want to wash the blankets that I put on my couch, right? All that good stuff. Y'all, I put my first load of laundry in and I don't have a lot, just with my stuff, like three. That's it. I put my little beads in from Gain, it smell good, the moon li moonlit something. Put my little beads in, put a dash of Dawn dish detergent because my grandmom used to work at a glass factory and it was gre grease would get in the clothes and Dawn cuts the grease. So I always have a bottle of Dawn when I do my laundry. Guys, getting out every stain makes my whites whiter, all that. Put a little bit of that in there, but just a little, right? Did all that, washed a full cycle, and I had never put in the gain clothing detergent. Now, I know I put a little bit of Dawn on there. Actually, I, I didn't even put the Dawn throughout the load because then I would have been like, okay, well, at least they're still clean. I put it on one article of clothing like that I really wanted to get, like a spot. So I had to rewash. Y'all, when I tell y'all, I'm like, but that's okay. 
But anyway, let's get into this Vibe article. The seven most shocking claims from Rolling Stone's expose on Sean Diddy Combs. So again, if you want to read the entire article, go to Rolling Stone. But I'm just going to read these right here for you. Um, two years ago, Sean Diddy Combs was honored with a standing ov ovation as he accepted the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2022 BET Awards. Just last year, he accepted the Global Icon Award at the 2023 MTV VMAs, where his children stood beside their music mogul dad on stage, describing their father as a little bit of strict, a little bit of fun, ultimately, ultimately Delilah Starr, Jesse James, and Chance dubbed Diddy as the best dad ever. Christian Combs added that he's watched his dad since he was young and described himself as the businessman's biggest fan. Although the 54-year-old may have been a superhero to his children, for others, he's been the immortal villain in their story for years. Notice he said immortal, like he's never was never going anywhere. Thanking God that night and a list of people who have contributed to his powerful and successful career, including uh, Cassandra Cassie Ventura, whom he was just seen assaulting on video earlier this month, Diddy asserted, anything I do is through love. That's what I evolved to be, and that's what I'm doing right now. Even if his involvement is real, that very moment at the BET Awards has become a taunting smirk at the very skeletons he's kept buried for years at the cost of others' pain. Now those, round, now those bones and more have been unearthed and put on display for the world to see. Cheyenne Roundtree and Nancy Dillon of Rolling Stone have now opened a few more windows in an expose that includes alleged experiences of Diddy's abusive, menacing behavior by former friends, employees, artists, and more. Of the very detailed piece, Vibe has pulled seven shocking claims that may or may not have been heard before and have definitely been amplified now. Number one, Diddy's abuse allegedly dates back to college. Allegedly, Diddy's violent and abusive behavior started long before he became who he is known to be today. Several women who attended Howard University with the super producer shared with the outlet that they saw signs of a controlling and abusive personality decades ago. Her allegations, there were incidents involving unwanted touching and fits of rage on campus by Diddy and women he was interested in. One woman claimed that she kept as far away as possible from him after he caressed her back without warning. Um, another former student claimed that Combs flew off the handle after she called him out for cutting the cafeteria line. Additionally, another former student alleged that Diddy would repeatedly harass a young lady by tapping on the window of her English class um, of her English class to get her to skip class. She would tense up when Combs appeared, a former student who sat next to the woman in class told Rolling Stone. He just had a weird control thing. I felt like she was fearful. In another incident at Howard University, an anonymous woman told the outlet that she witnessed Combs outside of their dormitory screaming belligerently for his girlfriend to come outside. The source added that shortly after, Diddy, who went by Puff at the time, was heard and seen attacking his then girlfriend outside, literally whooping her with his belt. Puff is out here acting crazy. He's beating her, the fellow students recalled. He screamed and hollered and acted a stone fool until she came downstairs, said another HU student who witnessed the alleged attack. She claimed he appeared super angry and was screaming at the top of his lungs and that he whipped her butt, like really whipped her butt. Speaking to the terror written all over the victim's face, the woman added, she was trying to defend herself a little bit. She was crying and we were telling him, get off of her. We were screaming for her. Number two, Sister Soldier allegedly warned Joy Dickerson Neal about Diddy. In the expose, it was revealed that Sister Soldier, author of the beloved novel, The Coldest Winter Ever, side note, which I loved, warned alleged victim Joy Dickerson Neal to stay away from Diddy. It's noted that New York Times bestseller declined to comment. Dickerson Neal told the outlet that she recalled getting a warning from Sister Soldier to keep her distance from Diddy, given his infamous reputation. The former video vixen sued Combs. I'm sorry. The former video vixen, yes, sued Combs for actual harassment, actual assault, I'm sorry, in 2023 for revenge P. And per Rolling Stone, her decision to come forward isn't about money, but to make sure the world sees that this man who rose to the level of an icon is actually sick and has left so many victims in the wake of his unpunished, disgusting behavior for years. She detailed that her relationship with him began when she reluctantly agreed to go to dinner with the budding music mogul in 1991. 
She alleged that Diddy spiked her drink while they were out and later pressured her into smoking weed. She recalled feeling her legs become rubbery and being awed by Diddy, who she says also recorded the incident and paraded the video around. Combs denied the allegations at the time, stating through his lawyer that this 32-year-old story is made up and not credible. Mr. Combs never assaulted her. Number three, Diddy allegedly attacked a woman in his own bad boy office. Kirk Burroughs, Bad Boy's co-founding partner and president, shared that he once saw Diddy attacking a woman inside his Bad Boy's office in 1994. Allegedly, an ex-employee told Rolling Stone that she and Burroughs had to tear combs off of a woman after hearing screams and the sound of shattering glass. That sounds like a, a, a maniac. Like, you're in an office shattering glass fighting a woman. Attacking a woman, rather. The alleged victim declined to comment to the outlet. The first manager of Bad Boy's recording studio, Felicia Newsom, added that she once had to restrain Diddy from beating this girl's behind, I'll say, after a fight broke out between two women. I'm holding him by his waist, saying, you need to calm down. This is not your fight. Another former intern, April Lampros, made claims this month that Combs got violent with her in the past and even forced her to her knees to perform oral acts. She claims that he actually assaulted her on four different occasions. According to TMZ, Lampros claimed that in 1996, Diddy ordered her to his apartment where she was introduced to Kim Porter. She allegedly, she alleged Diddy drugged her and Porter, then forced them to have sex as he masturbated. She is suing him for battery, actual assault, infliction of emotional distress, and gender-motivated violence. Number four, Diddy slighted Biggie Smalls on a posthumous Rolling Stone cover. Diddy has always been vocal about his love for the notorious B.I.G., but according to sources, the Can't Stop, Won't Stop rapper slighted the late rapper from getting a posthumous Rolling Stone cover. Burroughs claims that the magazine approached Bad Boy with the opportunity for Biggie's legacy, but instead Diddy wanted the spot. I was telling Sean, let's make it Biggie. You still have a chance for it for a cover in the future, Burroughs recalled, to which he says Diddy responded, no, he's dead. I'm putting out his debut album, No Way Out, in July. I need to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. Combs ended up on the 1997 cover of the publication titled Puff Daddy, The New King of Hip Hop. The expose also touched on how many felt that Diddy capitalized off of Biggie's death. In 1999, Diddy sort of backed those rumors as he told Rolling Stone, I think his passing added to the fame. At least 2 million of the nearly 5 million copies of No Way Out sold were due to his death, straight up. And that doesn't necessarily feel good, but that's the reality. Five, Diddy allegedly broke a chair over late music exec's head for dating his late ex, Kim Porter. Another shocking allegation has come out that in 2000, Diddy attacked late music executive Shakir Stewart, uh, yeah, Shakir Stewart with a chair. Per sources, the late model and mother of his twins, Kim Porter began dating Stewart, who Diddy had disdain for. During L.A. Reid's wedding in Italy, the bad boy founder allegedly broke a chair over Stewart's head. He left him bleeding on a hotel floor in Italy, Stewart's mother, Portia, stated. He had to have stitches and then Combs threatened him. I'm going to kill you. That's when I said, you need to get out of this business. This man is crazy. So the guy that he allegedly attacked, Shakir Stewart, it was his mother, Portia, that said he had to have stitches. And then Diddy threatened him, I'm going to kill you. And she told him he needed to get out of the business because this man is crazy. That wouldn't be the first time Diddy sought vengeance over someone else dating a former girlfriend of his. When Cassie began dating Kid Cudi in 2011, Diddy allegedly told her that he would blow up the rapper's car, which Cudi confirmed. In a statement to the New York Times last year, the rapper said, this is all true when asked of the incident. Number six, Diddy's former private chef alleges he requested a post-coital meal and greeted her naked. Combs was sued for sexual harassment by his former personal chef, Cindy Ruenda, according to the expose that shared more details. In 2015, Ruenda worked, uh, I'm sorry, in 2015, Ruenda worked for Combs and claimed that he regularly asked her to serve him meals while he engaged in actual activity. She also said that the formal revote CEO once requested a post-coital, which means after sex meal, while greeting her naked and asking her if she liked his naked body. According to the former staffer of his, 
she once was taken back to see Diddy engaging in actual activity with model Gina Hun. I think that's how you say her last name. She claims that upon the discovery, she dropped the food on a table and ran. Reportedly, Rwanda's lawsuit was arbitrated and settled privately. Hung, however, made claims in 2019 that Diddy physically abused her and offered her 50000 to terminate her pregnancy. She alleged that the disgraced hip-hop icon once shoved her to the ground and dragged her by her hair in 2018, as well as stomped on her stomach. Number seven, Diddy was allegedly jealous of Tupac and Biggie's friendship. Burroughs shared that Diddy had a certain jealousy for Biggie's friendship with Tupac ahead of their rivalry. He alleged that Combs wanted a friendship with Pac, but the death row rapper wasn't interested. Pac didn't have any kind of respect for Puff, adding 90s photographer Monique Bunn, who had personal relationships with Biggie and other bad boy artists. She also claimed that Pac felt that Diddy was a corny executive and that he was on the sidelines jealous. Burroughs also shared that Diddy encouraged Biggie to write certain songs that felt beefy. Reportedly, Diddy had released Biggie's single, Who Shot Ya, in 1995, as it was clear that it would be viewed as a shot at Pac. Biggie was adamant that it wasn't. Tupac responded with, hit him up, pushing the narrative even further that there was a beef between the East Coast and West Coast rappers. Unfortunately, the California love wordsmith was murdered at the young age of 25 in 1996 in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas with Crip member Dwayne Keith. F.E.D. or Keefe D. Davis being charged for his murder decades later. Davis made claims that Diddy offered him $1 million to kill Pac, which Diddy denied. Six months after Pac's murder, Biggie was killed after attending a Soul Train Music Awards after party in Los Angeles. So those were the seven things that they got from the Rolling Stone article. And I think they were pretty significant. There were other things too, of course, like I said, go check out the article on Rolling Stone for yourself, but that is just wild. One last thing about Diddy that I want to get into involves Biggie's mom. So according to Vibe, also Biggie's mom is ready to slap the daylights out of Sean Diddy Combs. Um, Valletta Wallace, mother of late rapper, the notorious B.I.G., has shared her frustrations with Diddy, legal name Sean Combs, as the hip hop mogul stands accused of decades of violent behavior. Wallace detailed her feelings of anger with Combs as allegations of abuse and inappropriate behavior continue to mount. I'm sick to my stomach, explained the 71-year-old to Rolling Stone. The revelation comes after the magazine published a six-month-long investigation into the claims against Combs. I'm praying for Cassie. I'm praying for his mother. I don't want to believe the things that I've heard, but I've seen the hotel video. I pray that he apologizes to her. She continued to elaborate. I hope that I see Sean one day. And the only thing I want to do is slap the daylights out of him, adding, and you can quote me on that because I liked him. I liked him. I didn't want to believe all the awful things, but I'm so ashamed and embarrassed. Elsewhere in the interview, Wallace states that Combs owes atonement to more than his victims. He needs to apologize to his mother, she says. I hope to God he sits her down and spills his guts and apologizes to her. So she says she's feeling ashamed and embarrassed for ever liking him. You know, she thought, you know, she knew of the relationship her son had with um, Biggie. And I'm sure he probably checked in on her, seen about her and here. Then you find out all these things like, wow, you know, that were happening. Um, I hope you do get to slap the daylights out of him. And then he gets put right on behind bars um, where he deserves to be. It's just like my heart breaks for all the victims and that they find a peace within them and are able to move on with their lives in a healthy um, fashion. Because seeing all this, we know that there's victims who probably haven't even come forward, but are triggered by all this talk, you know, surrounding Diddy. So my, my heart just goes out to each and every single victim of Diddy and of anybody who has been a victim, whether it be DV, actual abuse, all, all of that. It just, like I said, I hope that he gets exactly what he deserves. Um, I really, truly do. It just, I mean, you, you have daughters, you have sons. Like I, I it, it just goes to show you that something, there are things that are truly wrong with people. You have money, 
you have fame, but it wasn't enough. You had to have domination and control over people. When you couldn't use your money to get what you wanted from a person, you just took it and then used your money to cover it up. You know what I mean? So it's just the power that they're after. And I hope that he gets all powers taken away from him. The power of freedom, all of that taken away from him. All right, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all let me know if y'all read the Rolling Stone article about him. Um, again, what are your thoughts on this? I know we've talked about Diddy at length, but we will continue to talk until he is behind the bars. So let me know what y'all think about that. Let me know what y'all think about Charlemagne's, um, Charlemagne on the Flagrant podcast talking about Wendy Williams and why she was fired from Hot 97. I remember also hearing that, again, it was about, it was stemmed from her talking about Puffy and Jay-Z and that she actually was beat up, allegedly. That's what I heard. And then again, that's when she came to Philly. So any Philly people or, or Jersey people or New York people, let, let me, if in that era, like my age group, let me know if y'all uh, remember that. Also, let me know what y'all think about Mike, uh, Michael Jackson being a womanizer, honey, and Lenny Kravitz is celibate waiting for uh, a woman to come along and he connects with not just body, but mind, soul, and spirit. All right, y'all, I will talk to y'all later. I'm about to go um, put one load of clothes in the dryer and then get on to the next load. Um, I just need to remember to put clothes washing, uh, soap powder in the clothes. All right, y'all, I will talk to y'all later. See ya.